part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Birdwright, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be clips and snippets from my trip to Cincinnati Comic Expo, which, in my opinion, has become the best comic book con in Ohio. And so you're going to explore that, and it's going to be fun. There's going to be some fun stories and going on. And I've also want to say that I've come to realize that I don't think I have a favorite Superman. I think it's too hard to pick. Live action... I just don't think I can do it. Um, there's too many greats. And each one has a different little angle to their Superman. I don't think I can pick. Um, after my adventure, you'll hear, I only have live-action Superman, four more to meet. And then if, I'm going to include Tim Daly makes five. So, there's other voice actors I know who've done Superman, but... They start to get, because of all these animated films, it gets to be a little bit harder to narrow them all down. So, enjoy the stories. Um, I got to hear Lauren Lester sing I Am Blue as Dick Grayson to parody, parody, but Kevin Conroy's I Am Blue when he was Batman uh, from Justice League, which was cool. And I hope you have a great time listening to this episode this will be probably i'm looking at doing three episodes from cincinnati con and we'll see maybe just two but enjoy we are live at cincinnati con and it's pretty awesome right here i'm oh listen Wow, if only. But hey, I'm currently looking at Lauren Lester, the voice of Robin from Batman the Animated Series. I'm looking at Adrian Barbeau from Swamp Thing, or also known as Catwoman from Batman the Animated Series. As I'm moving through the crowd, I'm just overwhelmed by the response here at Cincinnati Comic Expo. It is amazing. It is beyond... What I've seen in a long time, to be honest. Uh, There's Jack Dylan Grazier, although Freddie Freeman. And of course, John Glover. Met him before there. He's at his booth hanging out. It's an amazing time. And look for more as the day progresses. Hey everybody, I'm here in line to meet Brandon Ralph, some other fans, and I'm talking with Ken, and Ken is wearing the Batman Live t-shirt, and if you're wondering what that is, well, we're going to talk about it. So hi, Ken. How you doing? Welcome to the Krypton Report. Thank you. Um, so Batman Live, what was it? Batman Live was a stage show, I think it was about 10 years ago. I think you were five, right? And um, basically the stage was set up. The uh, Gotham City would rise, all the, the buildings and stuff would rise out of the ground, and then they would have the act- live action show going on throughout Gotham City. And it would constantly change. The stage would go down, and another part of the Batcave would appear. Um, and, you know, Batman fighting the Joker, uh, saving Gotham City. Um, it was just a really neat live stage show. You know what's horrible is I found out about that years later after it had canceled and that would be amazing to have taken my son now you took your son you said yes i think it was five right i think we were in kindergarten yep we drove up to fort wayne indiana on a school night to go see it worth it oh absolutely oh it was better than the the marvel live shows that they put on right now i thought it was way better it's awesome and i don't know halfway through the u.s run they just shut down production and never heard why 
but it was really massive overseas, and that's where I first heard from it, from that it was coming to the States, and it was selling out all over, you know, Australia, Europe, and so we had to go. It's, cra- it's crazy that something like that right now would be massive. So. Oh, I think so. I, I, you know, I don't know why that they, they canceled it. They never gave an explanation, but uh, really one of the best stage shows that we saw. Live, like live theater, is something that we will like want to take our kids because right now our kids are five and seven, and that would have been one of those perfect segues yes. into it. We saw the Marvel live show a few years later uh, when it first started, so it's very infancy, and it, we thought that the Batman one was way better than what Marvel and Disney had put on. So, so we're chatting here in line to see Brandon Ralph. Are you excited? Oh yeah. Excited here to see Brandon. Um, sorry, you know, sad to see that the Legends is over with. Uh, really good show. Uh, the Arrowverse is now falling apart, which is really sad. Um, that is the best part of our Tuesday, Wednesday night. So it is. It is funny that it's ending and like they just had the ten year like anniversary. But I joke with my friends and we talk about it, it's like technically all of DC is now part of it since Crisis. They did the the fun cuts and. I don't know if you saw this, and I haven't, but there was a behind-the-scenes photo released recently of Stargirl and Beast Boy with the proposal that there's going to be a Titans and Stargirl crossover oh, no. at some point. That's all I know. Okay. And I'm like, that would be really cool to see because I'm really loving watching Stargirl with my kids and Superman and Lois. And I've watched the Titan show on HBO, and I yeah. think it's pretty good. So... But yeah, I, I really hate to see that the Arrowverse is over. It was it was a nice run, um, so even, even all the way back to the original Smallville, which I absolutely loved. We love Smallville, um, but yeah, I just I don't know which direction DC is going to go. But I, I would like to see it still continue. But all right, well, thank you, Ken. Yep, absolutely, sir. Thank you so much. I'm almost there in the line. Approaching. Time to order my selfie with Brandon. Pretty excited. It's a little crazy. Hey, I just ran into a guy. Uh, what's your name, sir? My name is John Alexander. John Alexander. He has an amazing Superman costume, and I thought I'd get a quick quote for him. Sir, your boots are awesome. Thank you. We just did a whole conversation about Superman's boots, and yours are probably the best I've ever seen. These are from Heroes Time, and they don't offer them anymore. Well, so. that's, that's a bummer. Where did you get your suit? The suit came from Action Costumes out of Argentina, I believe. Is that, they still have a website that's up? Yeah, Action Costumes. All right, well, hey, man, good luck at the con. It looks great, very traditional. You have a great time. Christopher Reeve version, that's the way to go. Thank you. Thank you. So I also found Batman. Hey, Batman. How's it going? Good. Your costume is awesome. Did you put it together yourself or did you find a place to purchase it i put it together myself i found a bunch of different stuff all over the place and just made it into a suit i like it because it's it's of course very you know christian bale inspired but it also feels like it has a little bit of the arkham style mixed into it that's what i was going for the so the 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 cowl is more arkham knight and then for the eyes i added in sewing mesh it's white sewing mesh that way you have the the white uh, animated look of the eyes instead of painting on black makeup. I, I so. like it. I dig it. I always, I'm very much when I make my own type suits or costumes, even with my kids a lot of times, blending different versions and kind of mm-hmm. finding your own. Yeah. Um, instead of just going for a straight replica of something. Right. So I really dig your costume. And well, you're, thank you. Are you in the costume contest or anything? No, today? I've done it in years past. Same suit. So I just, I'm not yeah. doing it this year. And what was your name, sir? My name is Zian uh, Burns. Nice to meet you, sir. Oh, thank you. All right. Nice to meet you. So sometimes when you're at a convention, like years ago when I met Momoa, you have a fun, weird run-in. And um, <clears throat> I uh, just met Christopher Lloyd and got a, a high smile wave as he was exiting, heading towards the restroom and watched in front of me. I don't have the $175 for a photo, but I got to say hi to Doc Brown himself. It was pretty cool. Ah, uh, cons. Just chatted with a guy in line um, who his best friend worked at Lucky Strike Bar in L.A. with Brandon and was there when Brandon got signed to be Superman. One day, you're, you're slinging drinks. Next day, you're Superman. It's American dream. 
Sometimes the saddest thing about coming to the cons and stuff is you never have enough money. And not even enough money for all the things that you want, but things to try out from a lot of the indie creators that you don't know of or see that just looks fascinating that you wish you could check out. Fun story. There are two parking garages in Cincinnati with the same similar address and I went to the wrong one and thought I lost my car. Good times, scary times. Thought I had no van. But who would want to steal my white van with Superman on it? Just got a fist bump and a chat with the legendary Lauren Lester. That's right, Robin himself. What a, what a nice guy. Part of the Batman tapestry. It's, a, it's been a very engaging and fun con. And it's amazing how many people are here from Batman the Animated Series. I know it's one of the big plugs. Kevin Conroy, sadly, is not here. But we have Catwoman, Poison Ivy, Riddler, and Robin. So it's amazing and more to come. Day one complete of the con. It was awesome. Close it out with a panel led by myself that will be soon be up as its own episode. Look for it also on YouTube. It's going to be awesome. Told, got to hear some awesome stories from the Batman Animated Series panel about, I didn't know this, that John Glover, who was the Riddler, was not the first choice. He was brought in to replace somebody. Same with Poison Ivy. Wow, but what an amazing show, what an amazing experience, what an amazing podcast, what an amazing panel. We're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, the Superboy Legacy Podcast. All Star Superfans. Superman the Animated Podcast. The Aspiring Kryptonians. Always Hold On to Smallville. Caped Wonder. The Geek of Steel. And Truth, Justice, and Hope Podcast. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, Keep listening to the Krypton Report. On the second half of my Cincinnati Con experience, you're going to hear my interview with artist and writer, creator, Alt Balthazar. And as you know, Solomon and I have been reading his work. It's very exciting. So listen to my live interview straight from the con floor with Art. Welcome to this special Cincinnati Con Krypton Report. It's I, your host, Tyler. And with me today is Art Balthazar. Now, I'm pumped because, as a lot of you know, Solomon and I were reading through his books, and I was using them to help Solomon read and better himself, so I'm really excited. got an autograph, but hi, Art. Hey, man. How you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Feeling good. How, what's it like being at CincyCon? Oh, it's cool, man. Like, this is, like, probably the best time. I've been coming here for, like, 10 years, since they started, pretty much, and uh, they give me a bigger booth every year. They, they give me a bigger room every year, a nice air-conditioned bed, you know, a bedroom, you know. But then I bring all my guys. So, like, we have an all-yeah crew here. We got an all-yeah booth. So, man, is it cool. I think I think this is the best year so far. I'm, I'm loving everything that I'm seeing from right here. Um, I love your stuff. Like I said, I love, because I have small children, the <laughs> child accessibility, you know, in your stories. Like, we started reading uh, Gilbert. Yeah, we got that from the library, so that's next on our, our reading to-do list. So, what got you into art? 
Man, I've been uh, I've been drawing since I'm a kid. I watched a lot of Hanna Barbera cartoons, Woody Woodpecker, Bugs Bunny, stuff like that, Tom and Jerry, and watched Batman and Robin, of course, Adam West, and but uh, but Ernie and Bert were probably the guys. Ernie and Bert from Sesame Street, and um, what got me drawing is uh, when I was a real little kid, my dad would have night shifts, so he was home during the day, so he would draw stuff for me. He would draw Ernie and Bert and Mickey Mouse and all these guys, and then one day he got shift to day shift and then I asked and he was gone to draw so I asked my mom to draw and she wasn't as good and so I was about four years old and I like and I, that's when I started making my own I'm like oh she doesn't do as good as dad and so I would draw my own stuff and that's what started I started just drawing all the time and, and you get the praise from your parents and your family and it's like wow you're real good and then in fifth grade is when I started making my own guys and what happened was my dad gave me this little notebook that I used to draw in, and I used to draw a character on um, every page. It's one of those the, the notebooks that the men, the working men, keep in their shirt pocket with their yeah. pen. So I had a bunch of little spiral notebooks that eventually I drew a character on every page, and then I, I ran out of characters. So I started. That's when I started making my own guys. Attention, so, yeah. Tony Midlock, uh -oh. please come to Will Call in Hall C. Tony Midlock, Will Call. That Somebody might be me. Is <laughs> my name Tony? All right. <laughs> so, who, what was the first character you drew? Do you still draw it? Oh, um, my first character I created? Yeah. Oh, I don't even remember. I don't know who the first guy was. I remember creating a guy called Pappy Pigskin. was an old man, a farmer. And then it just went from there. And then I made his ducks and his, his duck. He had a pet duck. And I remember making all his animals, like cows and pigs. But a lot of the guys don't. Some of the guys transfer over. I got a guy named Looney Loon uh -huh. that I created in fifth grade that I'm going to be launching a book later, this uh, 2003 with him. Nice. It's going to be a one shot. Yeah. I got all the characters I wrote out. I showed my buddy Scoot. He liked them all. One of the characters based off him, but his name's Scooch. <laughs> Instead of Coot, Scoot, his name's Scooch. It's I, pretty I, cool. I love it. There's so much energy and fun and to your work. Yeah, man. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. With... Like, we really got into reading with the Superman family. How did that come about, doing oh, man. those books? Well, Superman family started because Tiny Titans came to it. It was going to end. And we talked about ending Tiny Titans, and uh, it, it was going to end. It, DC Comics wanted to, wanted to end it somehow, and I asked them if we could do up to issue 50. I said, because imagine doing an epic book all the way to issue 50, and then end it at 50 don't end it at like issue 32 or 35 let's yeah. go 50 so they uh, the publisher at the time uh, Dan the deal from DC he said okay when Tiny Titans is finished think about what you want to do next and me and my buddy Franco uh, we had to come up with an idea so I kept thinking man I want to do Superman and then he says well pitch Superman and I said they'll never let us do Superman and he goes well then just pitch them Superman and don't give them any other choice so I went to the uh, meeting. I agonized over this meeting. I had this pitch that I've been working on for months. And um, I went into a meeting. It took 40 seconds. <laughs> my, my boss looked through the thing, and he goes, I said, can I have Superman? He goes, yeah, you know what you're doing. <laughs> and he gave me my book back. He didn't want to keep it. He goes, nah, you're good. Just send me all this on, on a PDF, whatever. And so uh, that's how it happened. And Superman family, I really wanted to do it where it's all about him and his family. Yes. So, like, I talked about... Uh, Krypton and Lara and I brought back Lara from the I put her in jor -El put her in her Phantom Zone before Krypton exploded I love and we pulled her out of the Phantom Zone and that's never been done before and there's so much stuff that's never been done before in Superman family that the main industry didn't notice yeah. no one was paying attention and we did it and I even created a, uh, an idea that Brainiac is Superman's brother yes. because they share the same father yes and and Brainiac's father's Jor-El because Jor-El created the Brainiac technology and in our universe it's like Brainiac is like the Wi-Fi of Krypton like right now Wi-Fi is everywhere now imagine if Wi-Fi took over and became Brainiac and Wi-Fi is everything kids look at it and they, they steal your eyeballs and they hear your thoughts I, I was talking about um, buying like shoes or something and then shoe ads show up on my Facebook feed yep. and then my wife keeps saying uh, they're stealing I was talking about this exercise equipment and so I, I yelled in my phone, Linda Carter running, Linda Carter. So, but I yet to see Linda Carter, Wonder Woman, you know, whatever. Now you could edit that out. But not, not keeping it, it's funny. But so imagine Brainiac being the Wi-Fi and just taking over. And that's what I was really going for with the Superman family. And it got cut short 
We only had 12 issues, but we re rewrote like 48 issues for that. I wanted to do a 50 issue thing. I loved it, and I've said this over and over <clears throat> when my son and I started reading it was I would love to see this as a cartoon series. Yeah. Or like a 10 minute, one of those 10 minute like YouTube super, like, because there is no other content that I've really been able to find that has both Superboy and Supergirl in it. Yeah. To make both my kids happy. Yeah. So it's either like, oh, Superboy's in this and my son's pumped. Yeah. Or Supergirl's in this and my daughter's pumped, but my son's like, where's Superboy? Yeah. So it was a great book to read for us as a family. Oh, thanks, man. And I loved it. I was telling you earlier, like, when we did it, I would do this, yeah, she kind of Lex Luthor yeah. voice. Yeah. Just very, like, James Cagney-ish. Yeah. And my son loved it. <laughs> and so, like, I when we read it, he would do Superboy, and he would do some of the other, Jimmy Olsen. And uh, I had to do Mr. White, Lex Luthor, and Superman for sure. Oh, yeah. And it was just a really good time, and I really love your books. Yeah. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, it was cool, man. I... The weird thing about it is I understand Lex Luthor and I relate to Superman and I wish I could do more. One day. You never One know. Day. Yeah, man. It's well, going to be I good. I appreciate you taking the time to oh, chat. Right on, me. man. Yeah, man. We got to go do a drawing thing now. Hey, you guys. <laughs> Look up in the sky. Yes, it's me, Sayla. We just want to say if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find all of our information right there. $1 a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash Krypton Report.